A warm welcome to Amanda Show. How are you? It's been a minute. Yeah. And I know people have been asking me, hey, we don't see your show. Yeah, it's because this platform deserves, um, requires your participation. So if you are there and you are not calling me to come and share your testimony, I will take time. <laughs> But thank you guys for your continuous support in this and um, especially for those who who have subscribed for the new subscribers, Karibuni Sana. And if you have subscribed and you don't watch, okay, you're not doing me justice. So subscribe and watch. Yeah. And um, thank you for everyone who supports me in prayers, um, just behind the scene. Everyone who's just concerned about this channel and this ministry, I thank you so much. And I'm hoping that as you watch this testimony for today, you'll be able to come and um, you'll get a step of faith and come and contact me so that we can have, uh, we can hear your testimony to encourage others. It is not for us, it is for the people around us. And here I have a very good uh, games and uh, this is a book it's called Bulliver the Bully and uh, this is a board game for those who are fans of board games it's Sozo uh, created by the couple that I'm going to interview in a short while so um, I hope you'll be able to support our own our local <laughs> Because we normally go and buy things from abroad and we don't support our own. So I hope you are going to, to hear more and why the genesis of these games are where the where the game where the genesis of this game games came from. So without taking much of your time, please allow me to introduce the guest for today, a very nice couple inspiring couple and I hope you are going to be um, inspired and also like the story and also be motivated to do more in your life. So let's hear our guest for today. Okay, now let me introduce the guest for today, Mr. Martin and Mrs. Rubai. Yeah, so thank you so much for accepting to be on this platform. Um, I don't take it for granted. You know, when you ask people to come and share their testimonies and stories, it, it always takes, um, like there is that, can I, can, do I, can I share or not? So I really... Thank you for accepting to be on Amanda's show. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just allow you to, pre to introduce yourself to the audience so that they can know who are my guests for today. Uh, I think, uh, my, <laughs> Madam, ladies first. And men just before, no? <laughs> <laughs> okay. My name is Robai Musilivi Moirore. I am married to the lovely Martin. Mm. 16 years. Wow. Mm. Um, we have three children. I am a crafter and I do many other things with my hands. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. I am Martin, like you said, mm -hmm. Martin Moirore. Uh, we've been married for 16 years. Um, we have three kids, mm -hmm. all adopted. Mm -hmm. Um and I think for for me besides being uh uh the old one out in the family, uh, you know people say you can't have kids. Mm -hmm. Like there's the ones who make kids. Um I just love the fact that we have three adopted kids. Mm -hmm. And I think all of us should adopt children. Yeah. Whether you are you have children or you don't, mm -hmm. I think we all should adopt children. 
You should aim in your senior children. Yes. They are so really, lovely. Very beautiful. Ah, man. <laughs> very beautiful. You are doing a good job. Wow. You are really doing a good job. How can you not love those kids? <laughs> I know. Yeah. How old is the firstborn? Um, Hazel is 15. 15. Yeah. Then Raziela is 7. And Amani is turning 5 next month. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So before we go further to that, mm. You have been married for 16 years mm -hmm. um, and you adopted mm -hmm. uh, three children. So can you tell us your journey in this? Um, why did you have to adopt? Um, adoption, for me, mm -hmm. I knew I would adopt kids by the time I was 10 years old. Wow. Yeah. 10. Yeah, I knew we would adopt. And at 10 is when I told my mother. Mm -hmm that I will adopt. When God allows me to grow up and make my own decisions, mm -hmm. I will adopt. The reason is, mm -hmm. I grew up in Dandora. And in Dandora, children, when you were younger, children used to be thrown, they would be found in the dumpsters mm. all the time. Mm. Babies who've just been born, a week old, others died preterm. It was, it was normal. It was a very normal thing. Mm. So I did my little research and I found out that as long as um, you can, when you get, what they used to do is they would allow you to take the baby home mm -hmm. as long as you rescue the baby from the dumpster, take them to the police station, and then they allow you to take the baby home as they await uh, put, placing the child in a children's home okay. or finding the family everything. Mm -hmm. So in the meantime, you uh, provide care. Okay. So I always requested my mom mm -hmm. if we can take these children. But because of the circumstances then at home, mm -hmm. she would not be able to bring these children home however much she wanted. Mm -hmm. um, so I told her the day I'll be able to make the decisions myself, mm -hmm. I will bring those children home. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So that's my beginning of adoption. I still didn't know the word, the term adoption. It wasn't very common. Mm -hmm. Back then, now when I grew a bit older, adoption was associated with buying children. Mm -hmm. So they used to say, uh, you've bought a child. Wow. That was what was synonymous. And then growing up a little bit more, I learned that adoption was for the rich. So mm -hmm. it was a way out of my league. But I still remember those babies. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, if I can give these children ho a home, I mm -hmm. will. So fast forward to meeting Martin. Martin also has a spot for children. Mm. And he, he'll he give you his last shot, even if that's what he has to, just so that you're covered. Mm -hmm. So it was a very easy conversation mm. for us that we will adopt. So we knew, even when we were dating, because we met in 2004. Mm. We, got married, <laughs> we got married in 2008. So oh, in that yes. period of four years, mm. we... Adoption was a conversation that was done and dusted. So mm. when we had the last premarital counseling mm -hmm. at uh, CITAM, we got mm. married at CITAM, mm. when we had the last premarital counseling, we knew where well, the pastor then, Pastor Ken, asked us, uh, what if God does not allow you to get the fruit of, fruit of the womb? Mm -hmm. We looked at each other, looked at him and told me, we are adopting. It was a no-brainer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So that is what was our that's our intro our to adoption. Drive, your yes. Drive. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. And um, did you have any? Um, did you try to to have your own children? Yes, we have tried whatever is biologically possible. Well, we just haven't done IVF mm -hmm. and those other things. Yeah. But all the other medical tests we've done, mm -hmm. and they are horrible. Hey. Okay. Mm. My goodness, it's easy to adopt. <laughs> <laughs> they are painful, eh? Ah, they are so horrible. <laughs> mm. They are so dehumanizing, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and um, when you did the test, mm -hmm. what was the result? Everything is normal. Okay. Like, I have had two surgeries for fibroids. Martin has MS, mm -hmm. multiple sclerosis. But MS is not a reason for not being able to sire children. Yes. And uh, because there are many people who have MS and they have biological children. Mm. There are many people who have fibroids and they're even pregnant with yes. fibroids. Mm. And they give birth and fibroids still remain. 
So we've done um, uh, we've done tests. All tests are showing there's nothing wrong, mm -hmm. but the babies are just not coming. Mm. But we are also we decided to live our lives half mm. fun. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> and because all we ever wanted to do, I always just wanted, wanted to be a mom. To. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So you adopted you adopted from which year? When did you start? Um, I, I, as we're going to the second year. Yes. Of our marriage, mm -hmm. yeah. we we started adopting. We got Hazel. Yeah. Uh, the first when she was six months. Yeah. Oh, and then first uh, she came yeah, home. the first time she came home, then she had to go uh, to her mom. Then after a year, we took her now for for yeah. keeps. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So we have three different types of adopted children okay. because they're different kinds. Mm -hmm. So we have kinship adoption, Hazel is our relative. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. So she's our relative. And then we have mother offer, which a mother can offer their child up for adoption. Mm -hmm. And our second born is a mother offer. Okay. And then we have abandoned. So babies who are dumped and mm. their families can never be traced, mm. our youngest is abandoned. So we have the three cases, the three mm. scenarios of adoption in our house. Mm. Yeah. Well, but God is good. <laughs> you know, you look alike. I mean, you can't even tell <laughs> that they are adopted. God is perfect matchmaker. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. And um, when uh, when you realized, did you think, okay, you had the idea of adopting earlier, mm -hmm. but did you think that it was too early to start adopting? Two years? Yes. Trying? <laughs> <laughs> no, the, you see, when, when H came home, mm. um, it was not planned. We got married in 2008. Mm -hmm. She was born in 2009. Uh, we were not intending to even have biological children the first few years. No, yeah, you know how when you get married, you yeah. see after a certain number of Three, years. Four, five years we can after, start after having you, babies. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> we were not in a hurry. Yeah. <laughs> you are still you're looking young. Yes. You are, we are in, a, in, a, in a honeymoon. Yeah. Honeymoon phase. Yeah. yeah, so when this child is six months and there's a crisis, mm. we bring her in with her mom, mm. and then we make arrangements so that she can live with her parents. Okay. And she goes. And then at about a year and uh, she was three months shy of turning two. Mm. I'm not sure of the yeah, date. about mm. there. Mm. <laughs> it was an emergency, uh, and so we had to bring her in. Okay. So our first adoption, <laughs> they put that in quotes, was not intentional. Uh, was not planned. Was not planned. Mm. Yes. <laughs> it's because God has saw that you guys wanted to adopt. Yeah, because we were already supporting her now from a distance. Mm. You know, uh, like pay her mom's rent, okay. pay the, for the house help so that her mom can work, support and see you guys can't live together. Okay, mm. so how can we facilitate? So we were already, already doing that from the time she was about six months. Mm. Yeah. All right. So you said, um, Mr. Martin, you have... MS. Yes, yes. Um, when did you learn about it? May, and maybe you can just elaborate. Uh, when did you learn that you have MS? Or what wow. is MS? What is MS? Because <laughs> people are just wondering. MS. Uh, what is MS? <laughs> what does it do to you? I've, I've, I think I've... Uh, you see, MS messes up uh, your nervous uh, system. Mm -hmm. So, like for me, uh, my motor system was messed up. Okay. I used to play soccer. I used, um, I love playing football, mm -hmm. and I my right leg was my powerful leg. And after some time, I started using my left leg. Mm -hmm. At that time, if uh, we knew better, we would have checked for a mess, and uh, they would have known I have a mess. That probably be in 1994, 95. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's when I was using my left leg. Like, okay. Because my right leg like, was uh, like Robert, <laughs> I like to enjoy her. I used to kick like a girl, you know. <laughs> this. And this is my powerful leg. Mm -hmm. But now because the nerves have been chewed, the myelin sheath, 
has been eaten up. Mm -hmm. So there was no communication uh, from the brain, the brain to, the, uh, to, to these nerves. Okay. Because of the myelin sheet. Mm. But now they are not, uh, I don't even know, I had any, anything like MS. In fact, MS was a disease of the Mzungus, mm. oh. the uh, Caucasian people. Uh, there's a friend of ours who has a mess in Australia. Uh, they refused, they denied him uh, medication because he's, uh, he's Kenyan. How oh. you cannot have a mess yes. and you are African? African. Really? Yeah, well, that it was at that time. The Caucasian yeah, it was just Africans Caucasian. But now we have more and more Africans getting. Yeah. And what is the Cause. cause MS has no non cause, they and don't no know. non cure. Yeah, like you see know. him, mm. he started presenting in 94, 94, 94 around 94. 94. Mm. Yeah. He finally got a diagnosis in 2002. And two. That's mm. when he got. So most people present their first symptoms probably mm. 10 years prior to, to, the, to, the, to a diagnosis. By mm. that time, the damage has gone. So mm. for him, his motor nerves and his optical nerves. Yeah. yeah. Like now he can see you, but he can, he, he's not seeing. I can't see your eyes. Mm. Yeah. So I, I think your specs. I can't really see your face very well. Yeah. Oh. So if you yeah. met out here, you have to reintroduce yourself. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> or if you just go back, change and come back. And come back, you have to say it is. But he yeah. will hear the voice. Yes. Now the yeah, voice. Yeah. But will now hear. I have to. You mm. hear it a few more times. Mm. You know, that's Amanda. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah, but just like now, yeah. I would uh, be in the woods if I saw you and, you know, dress differently mm. and talking because I haven't had you for a while. Yeah. Yeah, like I've had her. Mm. You know, <laughs> even if she came dressed out, uh, however. Even the smell will tell you. <laughs> I don't know it's her. You know. Yeah, though, if I came with somebody else who's kind of built like me and he didn't see how I was dressed, mm. he would still be confused. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, and, until they speak. Yeah. Until and that they started speak. when? Um, in two... Uh, I think two thousand. Two thousand, yeah. Two thousand, I was... Uh, now it was... Obvious. It was obvious I need to go see a doctor mm -hmm. because I thought I had a fracture. And I was walking and with a limb. Yeah, guys, you say I'm drunk. I'm drunk. Mm, mm, you yeah. what? You know, these yeah. are some of the uh, things us guys with a mess go through. Yeah. Mm. Guys say we're drunk and uh, and that time we don't even know what's up. Yeah. So when I've gone to my airbase, they've checked my eyes. They wanted to have me do a... What is it? Not a MRI, but... A CT scan. Yeah, CT scan. Mm -hmm. yeah, just, uh, just... Someone else said, uh, no, let him do an MRI. And then after they did the MRI, mm. it's when they realized I have uh, MS. MS. Yeah, so to confirm, they then did a, what is called a lumbar, lumbar puncture. Lumbar puncture. They puncture your... Been, they puncture oh. your spine to pull out some fluid. Yeah. Back then, the fluid used to be taken to Britain so that they yeah. can be able. They, we didn't have the diagnosis. Isn't that that, that, that machine? Oh it yeah. Is. Oh man. Because there's no. It was so painful. Yeah, there's yeah. no anesthesia. Yeah. Ay, there's yeah, a way yeah. you're carved so that they can be able to. Yeah. Work. And then it's a long needle. The process is just. Oh, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, it was so ah, it was so painful. Yes, it, the pain any is just even after mm. yeah. after the the, the fact that because when they remove the fluid, the you can't is walk. Some imbalance. Something. Yeah, when you start walking ah. five steps, you, uh, your head pains. Yeah, so it's everyone so who has a mess goes through that. Nowadays, it's a bit different. But yeah, most because people, of the machine. Yeah, because mm. of technology. Mm. But most people have gone through the lumbar puncture. Mm. Why? It's not... But again, nowadays, they are doing it faster and a bit easier. Mm. Yeah. Because they've Me? learned how to... <laughs> yeah, now, nowadays, they, they don't do the lumbar puncture. Yeah. They, they have that MRI machine that where someone it. goes in and they... Yeah. For like half an hour. Yeah. 
mm. you know, or some, and mm. then so they can diagnose. Okay. Yeah. So when you got married, did you had the the sight loss or mm. that you had it? By the time I met him, he had. Mm. Yeah. But he it wasn't as bad as it is now. Yeah. Okay. He was yeah. he wasn't even walking with a cane. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But he had a gait. I was uh, bouncing, mm. <laughs> swinging side to side. Wow. Yeah. I think that's how she fell in love. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would get that it. is what attracted. I would, I would <laughs> get it down because you're here. <laughs> I was looking like Jefferson. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Mama. Uh, and she fell in she love. She fell in love. Completely. <laughs> in love. Oh my goodness. Say, oh, Jefferson. <laughs> uh, <laughs> How did the society view you when, when? when you accepted to date him mm. in his condition? I have a relative who told my sister mm. that I hear Roba is getting married to a sick man. <laughs> Tell her to stop. The guy will die. <laughs> uh. Yeah, my sister never told me. She told me, I think we were married five years. Mm. <laughs> that is when she told me. <laughs> yeah, when she was told. The society did that. Uh, the other thing was they used to look and wonder mm. why I married him. And there were many speculations. Mm. It's because of his money. Mm. <laughs> that I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> I used to buy him lunch sometimes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that money was not there. <laughs> yeah, but so. I think it was that swag. It was the swag. The yeah, swag. People swag. didn't have that. It was just when two. guys did have. Yeah. <laughs> You're <laughs> right. Like this. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, uh. Okay. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. So the the uh, the society the society can be mm. we the society mm. we are awesome. <laughs> yeah. In our unique ways. Yes, we are. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And Martin. Yes, yes. How did uh, were you not discouraged by your friends, family members, not to get married? Uh Okay. From my side, mm -hmm. I lost my mom when I, I was a year and two months old. Okay. Yeah. So I grew up, you know, I was raised by my dad and my small brother who is a, who was a month, two mm. months. Mm. No, a month old when mom died. Uh, we've grown up as the, the two of us. And then we got a cousin because now my grandmother had to come and raise us. Mm -hmm. uh, she was raising my, our cousin, who we took him as our brother. We grew up together. Okay. So he was our brother. Mm. Was, because he's passed away now. But uh, that's how it was. It wasn't that he, guys would, uh, had anything to share with, you know, tell me or discourage me mm -hmm. getting married. Mm. I was, I was just, it was just me, my dad, my brother, you know, mm. and uh, the other brother. Uh, so no one really could come and tell me, I ah, don't get married, you don't do what. No, 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 we didn't have that. Mm. Yeah, we didn't Plus have you that. had scored. <coughs> I had. It's called a beauty queen. Uh, so when I learned she was born again, I went back to KCC. Mm -hmm. Tried to look for her. For her. <laughs> she wasn't there that day. She was sick, oh, so she didn't sad. come. So I mm -hmm. left my number. Maybe she can call me. Mm -hmm. You know, I was the uh, president of a particular school. Okay. <laughs> How can a president uh, ask you for your number? I give you my number. Uh -huh. uh, you, you call me. <laughs> yeah. So we went home. Mm -hmm. Met my cousin again. I told her, "My I know I called my cousin. She was in school with her, mm -hmm. Catholic University. Mm -hmm. I told her, "Hey, she give Robai my number. Mm -hmm. Ask her to call me." So my cousin's sister, I call her my sister. Mm -hmm. uh, my sister, who is uh, sharp in her head, mm -hmm. she <laughs> she met her. Told her, uh, 
my brother was asking for your number. <laughs> <laughs> so she gave her the number and I eventually called her. She was shocked that it was so fast. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, wow, oh, you have no idea how late I feel. <laughs> uh, so one thing led to another, I took her out, yes. we went out somewhere, and uh, I went to our place. <laughs> we prayed, and after the prayer, she got to know that she's my fiancé. Wow. Yeah. That's this guy just... proposed to God. <laughs> <laughs> Proposed to God now. <laughs> That's interesting. Please elaborate. No, you How see you now. To God? I was at her place, uh-huh. and uh, it was getting late. She, she was saying in Karen, um, we go Catholic in Russia. Uh, uh, yeah. I was saying someone in Karen, uh-huh. and uh, so I said because she was getting late, when well, you pray, and then uh, she said. Uh-huh. I prefer when the man prays. Mm-hmm. Wow. So the guy prays, and then he's like, God, I thank you for my wife. Where? <laughs> After the prayer, he says that he said amen, so it's acceptable. So, <laughs> and the man will yeah. let it be. Yeah. <laughs> Where? <laughs> That's interesting. So she was walking me to, the, to our stage. Uh-huh. She asked me, so does that mean uh, we engaged? Yeah, yeah. Does that mean? <laughs> and me being shy and all. Uh-huh. Is it? I think I, so. I, I said I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so you had not even ask her. Can you, you mean, be my girlfriend? No, I didn't ask her. I didn't go straight like but, that. Is not something? <laughs> I uh, did, you know, we grew up three boys. Uh, so, so this thing girls. of uh, Kang and Chicks and what? what? But I didn't have. <laughs> <laughs> but now I just, I was standing behind God. <laughs> you can change the lady. She said amen. Propose on my behalf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she wow. agreed, and uh, that's how now we are here. Awesome. And uh, I yeah. think it worked out very well. Three months after we met, so we ended up still wow. courting for almost four years, 2004. And he never, he never asked, them. can you be my girlfriend? Girlfriend, he asked casually. We were at Yaya. And then mm-hmm. he gets a phone call from a friend of his. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she tells him, I'm in your area. Are you at home? Mm-hmm. I pop it. Then uh, Martin tells her, huh? I'm at Yaya with a friend of mine. I'm not home. So after young up, he looks at me and is like, eh, can I call you my girlfriend? What can I? <laughs> yeah. You say, okay, what can I? <laughs> yes, there are challenges, there are expectations. Mm-hmm. Everybody expects that because you're a model, you have loose morals. Mm-hmm. It is the time for, you know, it's, it's, it's like a trophy. Okay. When the Big kahunas are able to conquer you, then they've conquered. Who are you dating? I am dating a miss, this one. Mm. Yeah, and you can see the history of beauty queens, and it's normally how they end up mm. or whom they end up with. So I got lots of those hits. It will be a question of I once we were supposed to pick the Paralympics from the airport. Mm. We didn't have power, so I borrowed my neighbor's phone, a small katururu. Mm. So I'm at the, we are the VIP lounge at the airport, and this big government, top government official comes and tells me, a girl of your status shouldn't be having such a phone. He gave me a card. Come to my office for a phone of your caliber. Like, okay. And, <laughs> and guys were making passes, and there was the opportunity. Mm. There was. Mm. To become whatever. You want to be on a billboard, come. Mm. I'll tell you how to how you can make it into mm. adverts and all these things, and it was a tough place where I had to choose. And I was how old was I? Twenty, mm. nineteen twenty. Mm. So I had to choose between God and the, and the world, the fame. Mm. and the famous verse that kept coming: "What will it profit a man to gain the whole world mm-hmm. and lose yes. their soul?" Yes. So walking the straight and the narrow was something that had to make a decision Mm. and I'm glad that God I was like God do not leave me here Mm -hmm. because on my own I will yes yeah and I needed these things Mm. yeah (laughs) yeah and then it's a time I have the opportunity to maximize on the opportunity I have and then I meet a guy bouncer (laughs) 
<laughs> it works out. I don't know you are. Uh, yeah. <laughs> can only afford chips at Kenchi once in a while. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and people thought you are you are going for yes, this money. Yes, so the society. Yeah, the society was wondering what it is I'm going for. Mm. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so in, in this whole process, mm -hmm. for you first, and then we go to Martin. Mm -hmm. uh. What hurt you most? As in... Like now, for for before you adopt, before you got married, because mm -hmm. I can hear the the the, um, the commotions or the, whatever it started before you mm -hmm. even got married to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what is the in in that whole process? What was the most painful? Like maybe the words they told you, mm -hmm. or a, a, a scenario or something that happened. Um, in regards to children, right? To and children family, yeah. and also, yeah, family, Generally. society, like everything. Um, what, what, what I heard most was um, the, the, when we got married, mm. uh, two months, we got married in July. In September, I was in hospital theater mm -hmm. to have a fibroid removed that had suddenly just grown. And then we met a guy who quickly rushed us to theater. Mm -hmm. which in retrospect we shouldn't have rushed to theater that much but we did rush to theater okay. so um yeah we did so the questions the the the, the family asking questions are we ever going to get children here mm -hmm. yeah so we did um we had this two two year old mm -hmm. three and the questions keep asking, every month you're getting your period and you're not supposed to. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be pregnant. Sometimes it's delays. Yeah. So you're kind of excited and then you're not. So there was a lot of tears. Mm -hmm. And Mato really did a good job to console. Mm -hmm. Like He'll just be like, hi, babe. And then he'll just, he'll just come for a hug. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> It is God who gives children. Yeah. yeah, and that's the constant that he always said. It mm. is God who gives children. He has already given us one, mm. one that we wanted. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. So um, this time we went to the last, second last guy, I think. Second mm. last guy now we ever saw. Mm. And he had asked us to go for the HSG. HSG. Mm. HSG. HSG. Mm. I think it's horrible. <laughs> I hear that thing is so painful. I have done it twice and twice is too much. Never wow. ever. So the last time I came from that room and I came, I just told Matu, never. <laughs> <laughs> never ever. Uziwai, disiwai is secure. And do not even think about <laughs> you going. agreeing with the doctor. <laughs> And, wow. and me, I don't know what HSG is, yeah. but I was, I was with her. <laughs> with that, uh, never ever. Was, yeah, never. Maybe the pain is just like the, ah, the punch man. limbo you had. And then, yeah, the lumbar puncture. Yeah. Yeah. The lumbar puncture. Ah. <laughs> wow. Maybe. But it is, ah, that thing. Mm. I was like, and at that point, after even the crying that time, we were like, you know what, we are done crying. Mm. God has given us this one. Can we love this baby? Mm -hmm. <laughs> can, can we parent her? Yeah. <laughs> and stop and looking. It, and it was also your dream adopting. Yes. And we stop looking and hoping. Mm. Because at this point, she would be home for one week. Weekend, she goes to her parents, her mom. Mm. She comes back the next week. That way, she's at her mom's for three days. Because we were really, we knew we had not quite fully adopted her. Mm. We were just in transition. So we were giving her a safe space, mm -hmm. hopefully that she will be able to reconnect. Because adoption is for the best interest of the child. Yeah. Mm. It is not for our best interest. Mm. So that we can be called mom and dad. Mm -mm. No, that is just our ego. Mm. But adoption is for the best interest. Are these children cared for? Are they protected? Mm. So the best child for a the best place for a child to be is with the biological parents. Mm. The next best place is adoptive parents. Yes. So we didn't want to separate. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to pull away. And that's why our children have always known their origin mm. and where they come from. And if possible, like our one who is mother offer, mm. when she's of age and she wants to find her mom mm. and her siblings. We will help her. Mm. Because
because mm. our role is just to steward. Yes. Yeah. So at this point now we knew mm. because she was in and out. So she wasn't fully mm. ours. Mm. Yeah, because of this back and forth. Yeah. Until mm. it became clear. But after that HSG report thingy and uh, the crying every month, mm. we agreed. We are no done more. crying. Mm. We are not even... Uh, if pregnancy happens, it will happen, mm. and that's praise Jesus. If it doesn't happen, praise Jesus, yes. because he is still Lord. Mm. And at the moment, God has given us one child to love, to care, and protect. Mm. Mm. Give us, give her. Mm. Yeah, so for us, that was that turning point. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And Martin, <laughs> yes. what was the most painful situation or this words, is... message, I mean... Things people told you. Ah, uh, wow. <laughs> I know yours too. Two, two phrases. <laughs> Blanks. Blanks number no, zero. <laughs> zero. You know, you just laugh. Uh, uh, <laughs> now, on the side of uh, reality, mm. and you remember what guys have said about you. Mm. You, you just laugh. In yeah. fact, you feel sorry for those guys. Yeah, yeah. he was called uh, Baba Zero. I am <laughs> Baba Zero. Baba Zero, surely. <laughs> yeah. Ah. I'm shooting blanks. I'm shooting oh, blanks. <laughs> yani. Yani, yani. Someone just gather the courage to say that. Yeah. Okay, this is what I, I, I came up with. Mm. Uh, kuna enemies. I love kuna relatives above those enemies. <laughs> Any kuna greater enemies na the the relatives. Uh, yeah. Relatives, I think, are even worse than, than the, 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 the some relatives. Wow. Some <laughs> relatives, of amazing. course. Yeah. Yeah, they, but, you yeah. know, because they know you yeah. and you've loved them. You've grown together, so so speak. hitting below the belt. Is they really know really exactly. Yeah. Where they can, yeah. So, yeah. And we look exactly. back and we laugh. You're like, mm. yeah, Baba Zero. <laughs> Kai. Yeah, but... Kai. <laughs> <laughs> and shooting yeah. blanks. Like, wow. Alamaya. Iyo na yo. Hey. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, you, you, you just, now I can laugh, laugh. about mm. it. Before, yeah, maybe it was, it had affected me. It was, it had affected yeah. you. Yeah. 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 Now I can just love him because mm. I know God in the Anapena water. Yes. It is God who gives children. Mm. Yeah. And so there is no way. The two of you. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. There is no way someone has come mm. tell me, I'm not daughter. Yeah. We have but three you know, lovely children. Yeah, and now we have this. And even to date, mm. we still get comments like, you don't want yours even one. Mm. Like we are parents of three. Mm -hmm. What do you mean we don't want ours even one? They are ours. We have three already. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and we, and if God makes you, and then we are Christians, so we use Christianism. Mm -hmm. eh? mm -hmm. And if God allows you to get pregnant and you get your one, like, sister, brother. <laughs> when God gives us pregnancy, mm -hmm. that will be our fourth child. Yes. <laughs> It will not be our firstborn. Yes. No, no. no. Mm. That will be our fourth child. Well, okay. Mm. Society, we are so busy. We are so busy judging. It may be no, and, and fifth I, child because we have a small cat. We have a cat, cat. so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Told you this girl is spoiled. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So what is the message that you are giving uh, those who are waiting? Eh? Mm. Those who are waiting and, um, you know, also adoption, it has to come from the heart. Like, um, am I willing, am I ready to raise a child that is not mine? Mm. Yeah, because you wouldn't want also parents who just adopt and then wakuja kutesa mtoto. Yeah. Mm. You know. You'd rather mm. let them. Be. Yes. You rather, they'd rather them let them be or support them mm. where they yeah. are than bringing them to yeah. be um, mm. uh, abused mm. or even a burden mm. more than how you are. Yeah. So uh, for those who have uh, that heart of adopting, what do you tell them? What is the kind of encouragement are you giving them? Um. I'm reminded of the story of uh, the, the story of salvation. Mm. 
because the Bible tells us that we have been co-opted into the kingdom of God. Mm. Like Jesus has adopted us. Yes. God has adopted us. And we are grafted into mm. the vine. Yeah? We as Christians mm. who uh, Jews first and then we were. Mm. So we've been adopted. Yes. We learn this from God himself, mm. the creator. Mm. Secondly, adopted children, whether you have biological or adopted children, we are stewards. Yes. Mm. Our role is to just manage. Mm. It's God who owns ultimately. But our job is just to manage. Raise them up. Mm. Even us who were born in biological families, what we know as proper families, mm. we left home. Mm. Yes. For a season. Mm. Once in a while you call your mother if they are still around or your mm. father. Mm. You go visit them as often as you do. Some people it's once every two years. Mm. Mm. But up to a certain age is when you have them. Yes. When they have age, then we transition them into the next adult level mm. Mm. and we let them fly, mm. whether they are biological or adult. Or mm. So God has given us this small window to partner with him mm. to be able to raise these children and transition them to the next level. Mm. They're already vulnerable mm. because I can't imagine being an adoptee. Mm -hmm. there, there are questions of who am I? Why was I let mm. go? Why didn't my parents fight for me? Yeah. Why didn't they? So however much we shower them, we must also allow them to live in their reality. Mm. Mm. And that is your truth, that you are adopted. However, you are loved that you were born from our in fact, we tell our children they were wanted, mm. they were chosen. What is the third thing we say? They were born from our hearts. Yeah, they were born from our hearts. They were wanted, they were loved, they were chosen. Mm. So it's not, I am pregnant. So we tell them they're even more special. In fact, we celebrate three birthdays <laughs> Yeah, mm. Because the day they came home, oh. the day, like, the day they, were, they, they came born. home from the children's home, mm -hmm. mm. the day they were born, and then the day the court granted the us judge. the orders. Yeah. So we celebrate three days special. Wow. <laughs> we have three birthdays we In celebrate. Here. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the rest of you have one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have three. Uh, and then they were chosen. Some yeah. of us were born and then when the, you are out and they were like, oh, a cute baby, it's a girl. Mm. Them, it's specifically written, baby girl, age group, this, mm. shown photos. Yes, we want this one. Then they Green. came home, yeah? Mm. So they are very, very special. Yeah. And it, it, not all of us get that kind of mm. special mm. treatment. Mm. But then also, people are shunning adoption because people are looking for shortcuts. Mm. This proper way of getting to adopt. Yeah. And it all begins at an adoption agency. Mm. This thing of, uh, I've heard stories, people ask the saying that, I know a girl who's pregnant, they know they don't want that child. Then when they give that birth, can they give you that child? That is child trafficking. Mm -hmm. It is not adoption. Mm -hmm. So yes, the child might know, but you will forge the documents. Just go to court mm -hmm. and do the proper process. I mean, what foundation are you starting this child on? From yeah. lying. How are you going to lie to the child for the rest of their lives? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so the relatives wanted us to... Yes. Or they have adopted there, yeah. so we give them children yes. also. Yes, we've gotten those ones of now that you people are on the spree of adoption, mm. if there's your relative who has a child, come take that child. Mm. Like, there's people, we're not in the business of just picking. Mm. <laughs> we're doing this proper way. Mm. Let's do it legally and let these children come home. Mm. Yeah, because now that's how children are being stolen and sold. Yeah. You hear people bought CG children for how much? You're like, they're not a commodity. Mm. <laughs> Okay. And adoption, adoption is not expensive. Mm. It's, not. No, it's not. Yeah. So if you want to adopt, mm. if you want to, if you feel like God has called you to mm. be able to mother or to father a child, give them a chance. Mm. But it's not for your self-actualization. Mm -hmm. It is for the best interest of the child. The child they yes. need care and protection, and it is their right to know who they are and where they came from. Mm. So you don't just adopt and then, and then you, you keep quiet. It's quiet. <laughs> and everybody around you is supposed to walk on eggshells and never mention adoption around mm. them. No. It's not right. Even us when we are growing up and you're teenagers, sometimes you question if your mother is your mother. <laughs> 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 because of the beating. Because of the beating. Like, 
So at which age do you, are you supposed to disclose? Um, as soon as they can understand. Mm. Yeah. There's disclosure at age levels. I've had people who have disclosed at nine years, but then at nine years the children begin to go through puberty. Mm. So it's a different ball game altogether. We decided to disclose as soon as possible. Mm. Okay. Yeah. As soon as possible. So we have introduced mommy, this one, and uh, because our money is abandoned, he has mommy A, mm. anonymous, because we also don't know her. We hope one day we will ever come to meet her. Mm. She will come. I don't know. Hopefully we'll have the DNA things and people will deposit in a bank and mm. we'll find close family. So we have introduced them to that, introduced the story of Moses and how he was uh, mm, adopted, adopted into Pharaoh's yeah. house. The Bible, how Jesus, how Joseph adopted Jesus, because he was not the biological yeah. father, mm. but he taught him things and he did things. So age appropriate, mm. begin talking about this, watch movies on adoption, read books on adoption, mm. and then the children will continue to guide. At some point, uh, Razi told mm. us she doesn't want us to talk about her mommy. When she's ready, or adoption, mm. when she is ready, she will let us know. So we knew we keep quiet at that point. Mm. But she's been coming. So now when you're adopted, what happens to your other mom? Her age. Mm. Your mom is around. Will she want to see me? Why did she give me up? And we give the answers mm. that we can, mm. age appropriate. Hazel would ask now that she's older. She's not asking anymore because I think we've given her every information. Mm. But she'll be like, why didn't they just choose to stay with me? Mm. Why didn't they just fight for me? When I was a burden. And you, yeah. you realize that the questions change as they continue to mature. Mm. Yeah. So we say my and your best. Yeah. The true. earliest mm. the better. And even for you. Because we still have relatives who come who will come and want to say it, but say it out of spite. Mm. And you'd rather they, they know. So that this relative if they come to tell them, they, they are already not giving know. them news. Mm. <laughs> they already know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Mr. Martin, mm. <laughs> thank you so much. You're most welcome. Yeah, yeah and I, I, I hope people know the proper process of adoption. Yeah? Yes, I have. Oh, I had so. done a, 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 a video with a lawyer. Okay. Yeah, so if people yeah. want to, they to adopt, please check that video. Yes, check, the I mean, proper legal yes. way of adoption. Yeah. And mm. it's not hard. We've actually self-represented and we are not lawyers. Mm. Yeah. So okay. it doesn't you can also to... contact them <laughs> <laughs> if you want if you want guidance. Uh, yeah. Rubai, Rubai gives advice to so many people. Uh, There's a lady who called me yesterday. Yeah. Her uh, court orders were granted yeah. yesterday. Wow. Judgment. Yeah. She's going to adopt as well. No, 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 no. She's oh. finished the process. Ah. Once you get the judgment, the court orders, so now adoption she can stay granted. Awesome. No child is at home, completed the process. Mm. Now she's at the birth certificate level. Mm. Wow. Mm. Adoption certificate, then birth certificate level. Mm. So baby is hers. And adoption mm. is permanent. Once mm. you go to court, then it's permanent. Mm. So you can't be people, that's why you have to, the Bible says that we need to count the cost. Mm. You do not start building before. So there's a lady who I read somewhere, a Kenyan, who she adopted a child, stayed with this baby for I think 10 years, because mm. now the girl was 12, and she returned her to the children's home. She'd never gone to court, never completed the adoption process. Then she said that this child has demons or things from hey. their <laughs> background. Okay. Like you kept a child for 10 years <laughs> then to you realize just... that they have some things from their backgrounds that you can't deal. At this point, you're the parent. You have the authority. Mm. And God has told us that we have the power to step over snakes and scorpions mm. and they won't harm us. Whatever we agree here on earth is done in heaven. Mm. So if there's a background issue that we need to deal with, we deal with it. Mm. Yeah, And we have God's power. So we cannot go traumatizing children mm. because they have a background. Who doesn't? Mm. <laughs> wow. Ten years then, yeah, did they, they receive the, the... 
to the children's home. And the, uh, the child was received? Yeah, because the process is not completed. Ah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It is very sad. It yeah. is very sad. Like, it takes you, so count the cost. Everybody is coming out of here with mm. reasons why mm. they are being given up. I don't think any sensible person just gives up their child. Mm. That is why I say it for those who have the heart. Yes. Because if Cause... that person, if they had the heart of adoption mm. real, they wouldn't have returned the yeah. child. Because even their own child could mm. have gone through whatever. Done the, whatever they're doing. Yes. yes. Why and... do you take them back? <laughs> I think maybe this person, the person she's talking about, maybe could not have opportunity to come to care and a man somewhere outside like the in country. America. Yeah, and she didn't want to go with this child. So they'll make up stories that mm. the child demons you, what, mm. what, what. But what. I've also heard church people. Mm. My goodness, church members, we need to be educated. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them. I'm so passionate about adoption. Mm. There is no way we can be talking about the love of Jesus. And, and then you, you come tell me that, do you know the background of your child? Of course I don't know. They were abandoned. Even they do not know their background. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so. But I, I think, I think, I, I believe all families should adopt. We shouldn't have any homes. We shouldn't have. Yeah. We shouldn't have. It's a it's a noble thing. Yeah, it's these a children great need, thing. need they need, need homes. They need a father and a mother. They need homes. Yeah. To stay you in know, families. even when we talk about background, it's just the first generation. Exactly. Do we know about the fourth? Yes. <laughs> we don't know those things. And so when people come here and start telling you how uh, you know you might be inviting Maroho Mbaya, and you're like, what a bad spirit. Mm. I, I hear mm. what you're saying, mm -hmm. but you shouldn't put it in the context of demeaning our children or making them to be second class people mm. because they may have some spirits. Mm. I know, but that is why we pray for these children. Yes. That is why we dedicate mm -hmm. them to God. Mm. That is why we pray over them and teach them God's word so that they can be able to stand. Yeah. And after they've done the standing, they are human beings mm. at the end of the day. Very true. I've heard <laughs> stories. These adopted children, they grow up and they become awesome guys. Mm. Maybe yeah. like in America, they are basketballers. They are awesome. They make them all the money in the world. Mm. And then the real parents now Magical, come. Yeah. They start hey, looking for I'm, them. I'm, yeah. your mom, I'm your mom. You know? We should stop using children. I mean, that, that is so sad. Yeah, you know, stop. this other father and mother have taken care of this child mm. since you are found mm. in, the, in the dumpster mm. to where they are now. And then now it's when you are showing up but they say but you are, because yeah. you see they, they are successful. Yeah. And, oh yeah, Mato has reminded me a question a question we've had. Mm. Sorry. It's okay. Um the we've been asked, what if your children grow up and leave and go back to their families of origin? Imagine we are fine. Yeah, because you have informed them since they are young. Yes. Our and part is just to take care of them, yeah. to help them to grow. Yeah. 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 And and if the time comes for them to want to... Reunite with their families yeah, and live with them fine. and make up for the years, mm. imagine we are happy. But we've we told them, we've yeah. told them, if it doesn't work out there, yeah. just yes. know you have a home this here. It's always home. Mm. Yeah. Wherever we will be, that mm. will always be home. Mm. Mm. At the end of the day, they have your names. Mm. <laughs> yes. And <laughs> even do. if they ever do a deep poll and change, mm. that's okay. Because our role was to steward them up to this point. Yes. To make sure that they are loved, to let them know that they are important, mm. they are chosen, mm. they are wanted, up to that point. So when they are grown, and they are gone, and they get to reunite with their siblings, their mm. biological siblings, their biological parents, and they choose to stay there, it is fine. Mm. Imagine we are okay. Awesome. <laughs> wow. We did our part. Yeah. yeah. And you're still doing, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would love for you guys also to do. 
<laughs> God give us the grace. Amen. <laughs> yeah, Amen. it is yeah. not an easy thing. Yeah? It is not an yeah. easy one. But if you also cannot adopt, mm. support yes. the mm. people who mm. can adopt. Yeah. Support the like now we have adoption is beautiful Kenya mm. and we have uh, in fact today we have a conference happening in Mombasa mm. for adoption and uh, there are organizations that can be supported that mm. help people be able there are people who want to adopt mm. but they cannot afford the legal fees or the the nineteen thousand that is paid at the agency first mm. if you can't afford you can support in such a way okay. Yeah. Yeah, that mm. is also a good uh, yeah. awareness. Because at the end of the day, we just want these children to be fine. So however you're plugging in, it's okay. Mm. No pressure. Yeah. <laughs> Tumesikia. Tuko wengi tunemambiwa. All right. Mm. So um, what do you normally do? Like, what is your activities? Do you have any business? Do you have... Yes. Um, mm. Martin has created a board game, mm. a fun okay. way of reading the Bible mm -hmm. that is played by two to 12 people. It's called Sozo, mm. that is currently on sale that we are selling. Okay. He's also written a children's book called Bolivar the Bully, and it's a book that just breaks down the message of salvation. Sure. What is it to be saved to mm -hmm. a child? Mm -hmm. So your kids who can read, the younger ones who need to be read for, it's an ideal book, lots of pictures for them. Mm. Um, I create jewelry and I sew and I teach crafts. So I teach how to knit, to crochet, to make jewelry and other crafting things. Okay. And that's awesome for this long holiday that people are coming mm -hmm. on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So people are looking for ways to engage their children in life skills. I do that. I help people organize their spaces, decluttering their spaces decluttering their minds mm. yeah, and just coming up with a schedule interesting you do them uh, here or, yes or yeah but a... i also go no here mm -hmm. we work with them here we okay. work yeah okay. everything we we work from the home base here all right yeah and then we so go if out. someone wants but you can still go to the yes places. we go to we go to we like now the teaching mm. the crafting the teaching life skills we teach individuals and groups so they People can either come here mm. or we go to where they are at where they with are. Uh, different nations. The board games, we have it that we send to different places. Mm. If it's a church group or a group that wants us to demonstrate. You go. Still. And Imagine how much guys, is it? Guys a from, game is going for 4,000. Can I show you? Guys, yeah. guys from New Zealand. Mm. I've already ordered the guys from Switzerland. <laughs> I've already ordered. Guys from Zimbabwe. Yeah, we got Aye. asking how to get the game. Yeah. How we can get wow. it. We are yeah, so local people, let's promote our own. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, need to, we, need yeah. To. We, we don't trust <laughs> our own yes, things. Eh? to create well, yeah. things. Yeah. yeah. And it's uh, like Sozo is a good... Um, game mm. played by two to twelve people and it's just scripture it's bible mm. like just a fun way of interacting and reading the word of god mm. well, we are we are hoping sorry we are hoping every family will have a board game okay so so in kenya and throughout the world mm. every family awesome we'll promote that one amen yeah so um Mine is to say thank you. <laughs> we are we're the ones who are very grateful. Thank very you for grateful. sharing your your story. Thank you, Amanda. <laughs> I, I know where? <clears throat> <laughs> I know it is not easy and I'm so happy for you guys for just adopting three children. Wow. That we, is... He has his phone has a list of fifty. Yeah, well, I was hoping to. He was hoping, yes. Uh, ah, adopt 50 kids. <laughs> what? 50 kids. Now, the problem is, I didn't. Uh, okay, I knew so, so, that, but it will give us money mm. and we'll get a big house. Na, 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 na. We'll get the 50 children and uh, keep it'll adopting, be okay. finish one process, yeah. so apply for apply the for another yes. one. There are those names, 50 names mm. of children. Yeah. Uh, it's I just mean, as many children from my as heart, you want, yeah. You know, this is what our home mm. 
and then I've had, you know, the kids will leave what, that house, that house, 50 people, what do you do with it? Mm. Then I say, we said it will be for like church groups that come to mm -hmm. Kenya or, you know, mm, you know yeah. groups that come. Mm, you can wow. stay so there. if God allows us, we'll still adopt. <laughs> Oh yes. oh, yes. I think we still have a lot of love to take around. Mm. Wow. Mm. Hey. We all, I think we all do. We yeah. all do. I think we suppress the love. Yeah, like it's We very... do. We suppress the love. When you're married, you just know you want to have two children. Mm. So there's no room for three children. Yeah. So you only have those two and then that's it. Mm. You can't even have three. Three. Yeah. Because mm. you've, it's you've blocked. Yeah? I mean, <laughs> you, have, you have room for even four or five. Yeah. But yeah. you've said, I want yeah. two. I want two. Mm. Yeah, and that's So now it. we are moving slowly mm. as uh, God allows us. Of course, children come at a cost. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, very <laughs> and true. It can be quite expensive. Mm. But as long as God, as, allows, it. as God allows us, this space. But that, nice. that saying of mtoto kuja na sani yake, it is very true. Mm -hmm. God provides. God provides. Every, hey, the other you. day, our friend came and blessed us. Mm. Yeah. Imagine. Yeah. Out of any, we it didn't. Just, we didn't. We, we have had our children clothed. Mm. They are clothed from Miss Kansas. These clothes we wear, we're not, we're not. Even a coin we haven't, yeah, God. We haven't spent. Sometimes we fear a bit too much. Yeah. Mm. But when God allows and he says, now it's time, mm -hmm. that child, God knows. You know, he says, I knew you mm, from before, you, even... before you were formed in mm. your mother's mm. womb. I have provided. I have a future, a plan and a future for your life. Yeah. It is true. Mm. So when, when I'm thinking, uh, this fourth child, we, because I told him I'm an overthinker, mm. is the one who, let's go, what mm. are we? <laughs> <laughs> the one who's normally screeching <laughs> breaks. <laughs> <laughs> when God says, now it's time, and mm. he gives us peace, mm. and it's time for application, trust me, from the first coin, that 19,000 for the agency, mm. to the last coin, that this child, we just go back to God, Father. Your daughter is unwell. Mm. What Imagine. Do you do? God always, always makes a way. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So we are looking, we, sometimes we sit, somebody commented in one of the Nini's interviews we did, they're like, mm. you say you don't have money, yet you go ahead and adopt three children. Mm. <laughs> Isn't that <laughs> foolish? And like, yes, it is actually foolishness mm -hmm. to the world. Yeah, <laughs> to the world. There's Very something true. about foolishness. The were Bible says, Your wisdom, yeah, yeah, you know, that is about filthy rags, your righteousness. But yeah, yeah. there's something on foolishness. There's something foolishness. about foolishness. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. okay. <laughs> May the God give us that God. foolishness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it but doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Things that make sense to us, mm. uh, there are things that don't make sense to God. Don't make sense. Like, yeah, and it's only God to help us understand and mm. comprehend whatever mm. is He's putting us to be custody mm. of. Mm. Yeah, so and it's a lifetime commitment. Exactly. So you better think through it. Yes, and know before that you decide. When the hard times come, when somebody is not able to sleep at night, mm. when somebody is screaming for no reason mm. or they refuse to shower, mm. which is a lifetime. Very mm. true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you have to chapa and you're like, is this my child I'm chapaing or not? Or not. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> anyway, that is why I said the grace. The grace. Yes. The grace is sufficient. Yeah. And may God continue to empower you guys mm -hmm. and continue to be a blessing to those children. Provide for you. Make Zozo, it's Zozo. Zozo. So, Zozo. Yeah. Yeah, mm. make Zozo uh, even international, more international, Amen. Yeah, Amen. that we can see it on Amazon. Yeah. Eh? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> when people are just tra typing yeah. board yeah. games, yeah. Zozo, Zozo number one yeah. on Amazon. Amen. Why not? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. And, um, 
I'll leave their digits on the comment section. Yeah, thank you for continuing viewing and watching. <laughs> and also, if you have a testimony, please don't just shy out. Call me, we will come and we'll have this. We encourage others because I know you have been encouraged by uh, Rubai and Martin with their story. And if you have um, the heart to adopt, please don't hesitate to contact mm. them or even uh, uh, the lawyer that I had done the video before with. They will guide you. There are so many people outside there who can guide you. And for those who are um, feeling like they have lost hope, please have hope yeah. again. Let your hope be rekindled through this story. Mm. This is amazing, this amazing story from Robai and, and Martin. So thank you so much. I really appreciate a lot. Thank you. <laughs> Most welcome. Barikiwe sana. Mm. All right. Guys, see you.